In today's episode, Chef Yasel Backman shows Elliot Moskowitz how to make his delicious barbecue braised boneless flanken using Prairie Street Co's boneless flanken. That is melt in your mouth, juicy. This is amazing. Welcome to Prairie Street Culinary Kitchen. We now have a veteran in the kitchen, Yessel Backman. We've been filming the last couple of days, and this guy is an amazing genius, world-renowned chef, travels the world with his clients, the YB underscore experience, just one cool dude. So one of the things we try to do on this channel is not only we show you different products, but people like to cook usually in a certain lane. I mean, you're much more diversified. Some people like simplicity, some people like complicated. We've done so many different videos on Instapot, live fire, smoker, grill, sous vide, sous -vide oven, that. stove top, an oven. And today we're making barbecue braised boneless flunkin in the Instant Pot using Prairie Street Co's boneless flunkin. This is a really interesting cut of meat. Some people love bones. They just love to chew at the bones. But some people just like, and I'm sure in your ultra wealthy clients, you see that some people really, really like to just have that boneless experience. They don't want to deal yes. with that. And since we work much a lot- much easier to eat. It's more it's, comfortable. It's more comfortable. And since we've started to work with private chefs, this has been a common item that people are- This is definitely a, a prize piece that, that, we, that, we, that we look for and that we love to cook, so. That's great. So the strategy today is we're doing the Instant Pot and one of the main objectives of an Instant Pot is you have one stop shopping. You don't have to have one multiple pot. pans, one pot. Easy setup, it, easy, easy clean up. Everything, so there's like a saute mode and you kind of sear things first. So probably we're gonna to have to cut this piece into some smaller pieces. When it comes to searing, you wanna really make sure that you give the meat ample space, surface, direct surface to really sear and caramelize and get those colors. So I'm just gonna take this piece right here. I'm gonna cut it into three. I'm gonna separate it here and here. Um, just giving us three nice sized pieces that we can sear very, very comfortably in our Instant Pot here. We're just gonna go one, two, and three. Beautiful. So with that, we gotta get the Instant Pot on. Right, so first we have to put it in saute mode, right? Yes. So we're gonna use this. So the convenience of the Instant Pot is you could do everything you need to at, at first. So when you're braising a product, you're, there's no opportunity after the fact to really to sear it. Correct. Right? So we have there's to no get reverse that. searing. So there is no reverse searing, so we have to do it first. And they make it easy, because I guess in, people would use another pan and they'd sear it, and that's another thing to wash. So right now you cut it, you're gonna put it in saute mode, right? Yes, so as you can see here, there are a lot of buttons and there's just a different function. So you can use it as a pressure cooker, you can use it to cook rice and grains like a rice cooker, a steam, saute. So we're just gonna go ahead and start in saute. We're gonna let this get hot first. Okay. And then we're gonna add the oil in after it's hot. If you heat it up with the oil, yes. it will, the oil will, will burn and we don't wanna do that. It will start pro smoking, tip. pro tip, heat up your pan dry, get it nice and hot, and then we'll go in for this here. Great, so maybe while that's warming up, you could walk us through some of the spices we have tonight. Yes, so we're doing a simple kind of barbecue rub. So we have some mustard powder, some ginger, some smoked paprika, some cayenne for a little heat, some garlic powder, some onion powder. We have a little brown sugar for some sweetness. And that's pretty much that. We're gonna season it also with a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna also add some mirepoix. So today we're just doing some onion and some carrots, some sweetness and then we're going to deglaze. We're gonna add some wine, reduce that, build that flavor, build that depth, go in with some stock, and then let it cook. Right, and I think the mistake that a lot of people make is they have all their ingredients, no mise en place, everything is thing, yes. but then they just dump everything in the pot, and they don't understand there's a certain order yes. in which that, things to have to flavor. happen, but then once you finish that, this order, we're talking about literally five minutes, you just set it, forget it, and you and then you're good. And you're good to go. The Instant Pot is hot. Yeah. We are good. All the bars for preheating are full, which means now it's time to the season. So we're just going to do a light sprinkling of some salt. Bonus tip: always season from high up. That way you get consistent coverage all over the meat. We're just going to do a light sprinkling of salt here. Then we're going to do a little bit of pepper on this side. Right, and that's like coarse pepper we're using. Yeah, yeah. 
And then I'm just gonna go ahead and flip these bad boys over. We're gonna go in for a little bit more salt on the other side. And then it is time to go straight into the Instapot. So, all right. Okay, let's go. Let's do it. We're gonna go in with a little bit of oil. And you can already hear that pop in. Oil's hot, oil's bubbling. That is a good sign, high heat. We're gonna get that incredible, incredible sear. Stand back, don't burn yourself. Okay. Be careful, always be careful, but when you are searing, you definitely do want that high heat. So we got that going. You just wanna get a good browning just, just on Just get some good side. color. Yeah. And you'll see when you are searing meat, the meat will naturally release when it's you know seared and, and browned. So if, it, if you're trying to like yank it up, it's just not ready. Just let it Also just let getting it be. some of the fat flavor there. Yeah, that also fat's all gonna, gonna go render in, in there. Render. Oh gonna yeah, be oh yeah. And then we're gonna go in with our vegetables to caramelize all those in that fat and just yeah. build that flavor. So we're coming up on about a minute and a half here, I would sure. say. And this is a thicker piece and you can already see we are getting some good color on there. So I'm mm -hmm. just gonna go ahead and flip it right over to the other side. Using your senses, you can hear that it's higher bubbling again. That means we're starting that sear process again. Okay, so we're about another minute, minute and a half on this side. Okay. I think we are good to go. This one out. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at, look, look at that color. And we're gonna go in with the next one. Beautiful, you hear that sear? Sounds good. Sounds great. Sounds delicious. Actually, we're only, at, once both these things are seared, it'll take just a few minutes. You're another minutes. three minutes, four minutes, you're Boom, all set. Down, walk away. Set and forget, and you're good to go. Right. We're gonna turn over, that's a good brown. Beautiful, and definitely don't rush the searing either. If it is taking a little bit longer, get that color, get that, get that crust, because that will lock in those juices, lock in that flavor. And you can see here, you can see the smoke coming up. That is a incredible sign. That means your meat is probably Good to go, and there it is. One more. Good to go. And Last one going in. And we're building like a base. And that steam, here. that aroma, that will just fill your kitchen with uh, deliciousness. Amazing. Okay, now we're going to turn this over. That looks great. Press a little, get some evenness, contact. We're good to go here. And we got the meat. Okay, okay, so now what's the next step? So next, inside the Instapot, on the bottom, we have what's called fonds, okay. right? That's the caramelized, beautiful bits of the meat. That is our flavor. That's the beginning of us building that, that depth of flavor in our sauce, in our braise. So right in with that, I'm actually gonna add in just a touch more oil. Okay. And then right in with that, we're gonna add in our mirepoix. Beautiful. And if you'd like to just give that a quick mix, and we're getting, we're using a wooden spoon now so that we can really scrape the bottom and get all that fond up. Yeah, we wanna get it up and not scrape the bottom at the same time. We're working it. And the onions itself will create some moisture, right? Yes, As exactly. they caramelize. Yes. So we're yeah, just gonna so caramelize the, the vegetables for a quick minute or two here. Once our vegetables are caramelized and looking beautiful, GBD, golden, brown, and delicious. We've We're going to go term. in. Yes, we love that term over here in the Prairie Kitchen. We're going to go in with our seasonings and our brown sugar, and that's going to really caramelize and toast, and that's just going to really perfume the entire braising liquid tremendously. Okay, how are we looking here? I think we're getting really good. Okay, great. So we're going to go in with some seasonings. I'm going to go in with a little bit of garlic powder. Okay. You just want to keep mixing so that the, the spices don't burn. Okay, no problem. We're going to go with some onion powder. We're going to go in with a little bit of cayenne. Okay. We're going to go in with some smoked paprika. We have some mustard and ginger powder. And then we have our brown sugar. And you can already smell it. It's toasting. It's, it's very, very pungent, which is what we love. And then right after that, we're going to go in with our red wine. This is just 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. Nothing too crazy, nothing too expensive. Just something nice. I like to say, cook with what you like to drink. So, Okay, let's go. Wine in. And then with the wine, we are looking to reduce that. So again, we're building that flavor, building that depth. And we're going to reduce that about 60 to 70 percent. We're looking for a syrupy texture, almost like a maple syrup type texture. And you'll see the color will get darker, but this just smells amazing. I and mean, we have the spices in there. You got the wine reducing. It's bubbling away, which is exactly what we are looking for. Okay, so as that's reducing, 
I'm just gonna go in with our stock, which is gonna be our braising liquid, and then we're gonna add the meat back in. Okay. And we're just gonna let that get groovy for a second here. So always better to use stock than water. Yes, yes, more, more flavor, the more flavor the better, especially in a braising liquid, as that, that liquid really does enhance the meat, that sauce, and it permeates it, it builds that flavor. So you definitely wanna make sure that your braising liquids are not just like an afterthought of just dumping some water in, Take the time, build that flavor, because really after this, it's easy. You're putting on the lid and you're cooking, and there's nothing more. And as you can tell, it got pretty quiet, which means that we are pretty good. Um, and I think it's time to throw our meat back in. So we're just gonna layer in our, our meat right here. Just try to shingle it in there, try to get it all fully submerged. Yes, and as, and as you can see here, we're perfect. We are perfect. So we're gonna grab the lid, and that just super, super simple. There's literally lines that you just line up and then and we that's turn it. it and you turn pressure. it to where it says close and then we're gonna pressure cook it. Right, for about an hour. Let's we're gonna see. pressure cook it for about an hour and then we're done. And short ribs in an hour, I mean, as a chef, the traditional way, you do it overnight or it takes six, seven, eight hours. So this is like, this is amazing. So yeah, is. especially for a home cook. So we're just gonna press the pressure cook and we're just gonna press start. It's set on an hour already. And then we just leave it alone. And that's it. Voila, and we come back in an hour. Come back for some short ribs very soon. I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay, so the recipe's finished. We're in keep warm mode. But one of the most important things is to see what's going on at the top and move from seal to vent mode. And there's something called a natural seal, or you can push it. So lots of times in recipes, people are anxious to have that, and they move it to vent, and they force it, and then you'll see this beautiful kitchen, a pile of steam going up. Yes. So either you have to throw a towel on top of that, or you just be patient for 20 minutes, and this button and I, will I go down, down naturally, and then everything's all good. So let's do this, because I can't take smelling this anymore. All right, so we're just gonna open it up here, okay. and we definitely have some steam. So I'm just gonna grab a pair of tongs. I'm gonna grab a nice piece of our beautiful, wow, that is tender. That is literally falling apart. Look at that steam. Okay, doke. We're right in the center there. And there you have it, our barbecue braised boneless flunkin done in the Instant Pot using Prairie Street Co's boneless flunkin. So it's just important when you do cut meat and you want to cut against the grain, our grain is going this way, so I'm just going to take a nice little corner slice right off that, and look at that, I mean that just falls right apart, so. That's perfect. Yeah, I think it's time we dig right in. I think you have to take the first bite, I, you're the genius. I will happily do that. That is melting your mouth, juicy. You get the wine, you get the spices, you get the beef, the, the fat, the marbling. Mm. Wow. Get okay. in there. I guess it's my turn. I don't want to stop. It is beyond amazing. You know, I'm not really a sauce guy because some people just slather sweetness onto meat. But you have Keep so many balances that are going on simultaneously and it's so easy to replicate. So you are amazing. I look forward to working with you in the future on set, offset, yes. client business. There's so much that you're gonna see us do together. It's gonna to be amazing. So every Sunday, two o'clock, we have new long form videos and now short form videos short that are coming out. And pro pro tips. tips and podcasts and all kinds of stuff. So this guy is the real deal. He's authentic. This guy is the real deal. <laughs> best, best kosher meat in the market. So thank you very much. Go to Prairie Street Co. and you could experience all our videos, our meat, and really have this experience in your own home. And that's why we put so much energy into making these videos to make you confident that when you get your meat at home, no matter which lane you drive in, we're there for you. So pass this around to your friends. It helps the channel. It helps us continue on with that. And have a great day. See you next Sunday at 2 o'clock. Subscribe to our channel now and set your notifications so you don't miss our latest recipes and chef-led tutorials. Then head over to prairiestreet.co to shop for your next big meal.